Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Sounds from the Cellar, hosted by the Olive Tree Madman. Today, we're hitting you with another podling. These are shorter episodes where you get to meet members of the band. Next up, Mike Davis. The great Mike Davis. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Man. Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Just a the little... elder statesman of the band. Yeah. There we Very go. Old. As you can see. <laughs> As you can see. As you can see. <laughs> I fluctuate in between use of uh, of just for men. Today it's a fresh coat. Yeah. Uh, um, but I knew you when you were, uh, you know, fully black. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so oh. <stupid>. <laughs> and now you're gray. Partially. Yeah. Oh. Partially. The days I'm white. The other days. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, my uh, wife decided she didn't like the the yeah. tanning my beard. And right. So she says, she said, just let it grow out. Well, ladies like the salt and pepper, right? As long as she does. As long as she does. really counts. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, it looks really good because you got a full beard. So she's right. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it was a little scraggly, it would be. Yeah. How did you get so killing? How did you get such a <laughs> what? Okay. What's really going on here? <laughs> like, because there's, I mean, how many great singers do we know? We know a lot of great uh, singers. A lot there's of great singers. Davis. And nobody is like Mike. It's really true. What yeah. is your deal? I, I don't. Uh-huh. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it, it, it kind of started by force. I was forced to sing in church, you know, mother, go up there and sing in church every day when I was a kid. And sing by yourself. By myself with the choirs. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Let's tell us where you're from where and where you originally, started. Originally from Brooklyn. Yeah. Bevis Stuyvesant. Bevis mm-hmm. Stuyvesant. 325 Chauncey Street. Oh, yeah. My sister's your mm-hmm. neighbor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my um, parents are from, my father's from um, Pennsylvania. My mother's from South Carolina. And we, my mother and father separated, but my, we kept in touch and my mother was a church person. So found a little church around the corner and I was there every day. Didn't know why I was there, but mommy said, go, you just go. So me and my brother went to church and I just started singing and she's like, you, you can sing, get up there and sing. And I, Sang in church for a little while, and then when I got old enough, I don't want to do it anymore, and I stopped. Hmm. Uh, why didn't Why didn't you want to do it? Cause I didn't, I didn't like it. I was shy. Yeah. How old were you when you stopped? Twelve. Oh, it's like enough is enough. <laughs> Wait, so were you were you a boy soprano? Then? Um, I was everything. I sang everything. I sang all the parts <laughs> because at that time, you know, your voice is. I'm restricted, so I sang top, middle, bottom. I sang whatever. You'll have to forgive my friend Colin. He went straight to like Catholic, uh, like boys sopranos, like boys choir. He wasn't the fucking boys soprano. He's like in a fucking gospel church. <laughs> I was everything. I sang every note. I was Michael Jackson was like my favorite singer at the time. So everything he did, I did. Trying to kill him. And I mimicked choice, everything yeah. he did. So uh, left church, got. Back into music when I was in high school, when I started back again because of a girl. <laughs> I started in high school again. Girl, I really liked. Um, only way I could see her because her brothers were in school and they wouldn't let me near her. Mm-hmm. So the only way I could see her is if I went to the chorus after school. So I just went to chorus because I wanted to see her. Yeah. I stood in the back and, <laughs> and the teacher at the time, Mr. Swartz said, if you're in this class, you got to do a solo. Hmm. What? You got to do a solo. You can't stay in this class if you can't sing. And you've been mumbling the whole time. And I was like, fine. And he said, sing whatever you want. And I think I sang Maybe Tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow yes. we will make it better. Jackson's. Jackson 5 is so yeah. good. And he was just staring at me like, we should do that one here. I can't do them notes no more. Nah, that shit is high. That's child high. Yeah, that. And he was like, "Why do not don't I know who you are?" I was like, "I don't know." Right. He said, "Well, what are you doing here?" Like I'm spitting game. <laughs> <laughs> she she slapped my hand down. It's like, came here because I like her. Well, if you keep singing like that, 
She'll like you too. Yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. she did. And yeah. That was my girlfriend for two years. Wow. wow. And from there, I joined the gospel choir because the guy there was a friend of hers, was the leader of the gospel choir. Was that in the school or at a in church? In the school. In the school. Mm-hmm. In the school. And from school, I got my love back for church again. Right. And I joined every choir at that time. They, I was in, at one point, I was in 17 choirs. What? what? 17? Co- wait, continue. Choirs, quartets, ensembles. How is it them. even possible? Because everybody wants you in a choir when you can sing. So wait, so you were like, you? they'd bring you in and you'd be the ringer and sing a lead and then go to the next one? No, actually, I didn't <laughs> sing many leads because I was scared crapless okay. to sing in church. Church is a whole different... Yeah, it's vicious. It's judgmental. Mm. Yeah, mm. It's all heck. Yeah. So, and there's killers in there too. And there's killers in there. And if they, if you're not there... What they want, mm, yeah. they kind of give you the oh, right. little uh-huh. church thing. But <laughs> I was always terrified, wow. always terrified to sing in church. So I sang background. I sang a little bit of lead here and there, but I was mostly like in the background, wailing in the background. They were it's like loud. So that's how I started singing again. Oh. I went back to church. And I was in church until I was thirty. Wow, back in church and then. Started working down here. And how did that happen? And we talking down here, we're yeah. talking about the legendary Cafe Wa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm a basketball nut. I played basketball. That was my other passion besides singing. So around the corner, West 4th Street, playing around there all the time. And, you know, around here, if you don't buy something, they won't let you use the bathroom. This guy was like, yeah, let me use the bathroom. His name was Bill. It was the doorman, the first doorman that was there. He's like, yeah, you can use it. I was like, oh, okay. I went downstairs. Noam was down there playing with a little band. I was like, oh, it's live music. This is cool. Was this 90s? 87, 88? Wow. Yeah, 87, 88. And I went down there and I was like, wow, this is cool. How many days a week did they do this too? I was like, oh, he told me the days. I said, I'm going to come back. About a month later, it was my birthday. My friends were like, you want to go somewhere? We're going to go. I was like, there's this place around the corner. They got live music and it's free to get in. And the drinks are like, was like $2 for a beer. Right. Back then, $2 was a lot of money. But, right. well, got downstairs and he, Noam had people coming up to sing. And my friends were like, man, you can sing better than that. Right. It's like, eh. I said, yeah, but I'm cool. They wrote a note without me knowing that I, they wrote a note saying, this guy can sing better than anybody in the band. No reads the note. Damn. Savage. Okay. Yes. Savage. <laughs> signing, some, yeah. signing your friend up for karaoke. <laughs> he yeah. reads the note, and he's like, his, his name is Mike Davis. I'm like, you mother... <laughs> I was like... <laughs> so I was like, well, if I sing, what do I get? <laughs> My man. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I sing, From what do I get? He's like, well, if you sing and this audience thinks you sing better than anybody in here, he said, I'll pick up your check. Okay. You're okay. like three bottles of Boom Clicquot. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I was in in the front part of the uh, Cafe Y, standing on the table singing um, uh, Living for the City. Just oh, killing man. it. I had the entire audience singing along with me, and the music stopped, and I started wailing. I was like, are we going to get this free? <laughs> We're going to get this beer. And we ate and drank, and from that night on, no one was like, you've got to come back. you got to come back. And I kept coming back with more and more friends, and that's how his band changed, because all of my friends, Vivian, uh, Nick Jones, uh, Ron Long, all the cats that were playing down there back then, when we was coming down there, mm-hmm. all of the OGs started coming down there because I started telling everybody, I'm playing this place in the village. Well, I should come down. You brought Ron in? Ron came down with... Now, Ron was up like a, some place was in the Bronx. Honeysuckles? N- no. Oh, what's the name of the club that was up, up in where Ron played a lot? When Ron had the long hair. Uh... Ron, when I when I first saw Ron, Ron was playing in the Bronx. Oh, okay. At a play called Arthur's Arthur's Roundtable. 
Arthur's rounds up. We're talking about Ron Long, one Ron of the Long. most legendary bass players in the world. Incredible. Not a bad drummer either. Really? <laughs> oh my God. I never yeah. played drums. Yeah. Actually, it's his first instrument. When right? I first saw yeah. him, he was yeah. playing drums. Yeah. When I first saw him, he was playing drums. Yeah. Wow. And then I heard him play the bass, and I was like, what? Yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. He was looking yeah. like the. He plays him several Like Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays everything. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He plays everything well. Wow. Yeah. Too. Guitar. Piano, drums, yeah. and bass. Prince used to come down and see check Ron out down in the underground. Prince would come down, right? Yeah. Prince, was Prince ever uh, there when you Larry were singing? Mm -hmm. What was the vibe? He was just he was just a music head. Yeah, he, he just, just takes it. He came down, and the funny story was he came to the Village Underground. I was with Raj, right? And I'm singing something with Raj on stage. I forget it was it was a, a a piece of a common song. And I saw him at, at that time. They had this booth, and he was in the booth, and there's the two tall bodyguards, mm. and he kept getting up. Yeah. But I always heard he was short, but he would get up, and it was he'd be tall. And I was like, oh, maybe he's not as short as everybody said. But I didn't know he was standing on the bench. So funny. <laughs> so when he came down the stairs, he kept coming down, and I kept going, oh. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> he was he was like this high. I was he like, goes, oh, and that's with heels. <laughs> yes, that's and he had heels. the heels on. <laughs> and he played, and he was like, "Man, I just want to tell you, deep voice too." Yeah. Wow, so I just yeah. want to tell you, man, you were fucking killing it, bro. Really? I love your voice, man. You just well, I was like, "But you're Prince." Yeah. Wow. I, just said, I don't care, man. I just love. Your <laughs> I don't voice, care, man. man. Your voice is amazing. I was like, "Wow," but that was. Were you singing, there is a light that shines? Yeah. I knew you were singing that that's one. It. That's because yeah. that's the heat. That's it. <laughs> that was exactly it. And I yeah. love that. Just that snippet. I was Great. like, yeah. no, Pr Jay Dilla fucked that up for everybody. He, the, his version is better than Bobby Caldwell's oh, version. Yeah. Right? In my humble opinion. <laughs> Respect <laughs> Bobby Caldwell and Jay Dilla. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to the Wah. Years happen. Record deal. Yeah, I... Um, my manager at the time was Ralph Roll, who is a legendary drummer. Drummer. It was my first manager, one of my best friends in the music industry, introduced me to everybody. Allison Williams. Makes a hell of a cookie too, don't he? And he's a he's a he's <laughs> wow. a he's a entrepreneur. He has his own cookie company. Where, where is he at? Where's soul Snacks. Soul it's Snacks. Amazing. Soul Snacks. I need it. It's like crack. I need a it's soul like, snack. It's like it's literally like crack. You have a cookie, you like, yo, you got any more? Really? I swear to God. Yeah. Crave I used ability. to bring him down to the Y and leave him in the front. And by the time he would come back in an hour, gone. Gone. Plug <laughs> gone. for Ralph. <laughs> but the record deal. So uh, it was him and um, uh, his partner was Vicky, Vicky Henry. Vincent Henry's another another great musician. His wife at the time, who passed away, but they were my first, and they got me a deal at Jive Records. I was a replacement for Glenn Jones, and they had just they signed me, and then two months later they signed R. Kelly, and kind of R. Kelly was like, put him in the microwave, and Bing, he's ready. Right. We had three albums out, mm -hmm. so it kind of pushed me on the back burner, and. It was it was a it was a kind of like a deal just to get me in the door and see what I could do and R. Kelly came in and then went to the wayside. But I did great in Europe. Did great oh, in Europe. Cool. Really good in Europe. I, I went to Europe in London uh, for a week. I ended up staying for a month. Wow. Because they kept rebooking me every weekend. They were booking me. They were paying twenty five hundred pounds. Wow. At that time, it was double a dollar here. So I was like, I am not coming back if y'all don't have. Right. I, it's too much money to be made here. So, so that fell to the wayside. And uh, I was, I was kind of like a tax write off for me. As far as, I, as far as I was concerned, I was just something to put on the roster so they could have a roster and throw everything against the wall to see what sticks. Yeah, for sure. And it was me, High Five, R. Kelly, uh, Tribe, no shit. KRS. Oh my God. Damn. Uh, Bruce Nickens. Wait, that was RCA Jive, right? Or yeah, RCA, RCA Jive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jive RCA, or yeah. RCA. I forget which Whatever, one it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, had a, they had a nice roster. A nice roster. And they almost signed Shaq. Uh -huh. They almost signed Shaq. So, Amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was... For me, a record deal was... At that time, it was like, oh my God, I got a record deal. But then once you find out, it's not... 
what it's cracked up to be. But I was blessed to get it. To say it was under my belt, I did something that I wanted to do. So it was cool. So can you get us a gig in Europe or what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Come on, Mike. Come on, Come on they're still time. around. Come on. <laughs> I need to get back to London. I got a couple of friends in London that have been trying to get me to come out. Hello. And hello. I told them, I sent them some of the stuff that we have done here. And one of the guys was like, bro, we got to see what we can do to get you out. I said, well, let me know what it takes and I'll talk to them or I'll put you in touch with the guys and let y'all talk to them and y'all can figure out the particulars. I would love, we would, we would smash London. Well, let's go. Mm-hmm. We would smash Europe, period. Once we get out with what we're doing right here. Once we lose the ankle bracelets, guys, we can go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for a Slim Shady here. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh, tell us about when you like first started as a singer, or but just a lover of music, started to like fall for Stevie Wonder and his music and his voice mm. and his singing. I was just family. Family. Uh, I hate to sound like the typical black male singer, but mm-hmm. music was in my house all the time. Yeah. My dad sang, my mom sang, mm-hmm. my brothers and sisters. It's like questionable. Yeah. Yeah. They sang, but it was like. They were supportive. <laughs> they sang, but not like I did. Right. Um, so my mom kind of recognized it and she just played music in the house. So all I heard was um, Stevie, um, uh, Mahalia, Shirley Caesar, then the Hawkins. Then she would mix it in with uh, Teddy and Isaac and um, Boss Skaggs. And uh, just, it was just a, because at that time we didn't have FM. So it was all WWRL. Mm-hmm. And WWRL was an AM station and they played everything. everything. Right. So I heard, um, uh, what's Don, Donnie McLean? No, McLean? Don McLean, yeah. Don yeah. McLean. Yeah. I heard uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Sure. I heard, it, it would just, everything came with the radio. So wow. I was just, I knew a little bit of everything. Absorbing yeah. it all. I was, was that Dominic Fink song we were playing last night? Yeah, Vincent. Vincent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He wrote yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. About and that. American Pie. Wow. So I knew all of that stuff. I heard it before, so I kind of, it was kind of like subliminally in my mind, like, I know all of this stuff. I knew all this stuff, but Stevie just stuck out. Stevie, um, the Jackson 5, and for some strange reason, people Bryson. Pebo's mm-hmm. killing, that's, yeah, that's why. Right. Yeah. Pebo Bryson just... Don't you dare close your eyes. Listen, he just stuck out to me and the... I don't, I, just his... The tones. Amazing. And everything was just... I can hear that now that you mentioned it. effortlessly it done and it was just a tone and he just... It was just effortless the way he did it and I was like, oh my God. And then Frankie Beverly and later on... Luther came in and Luther just blew the game up. Yeah. Luther blew the game up for me. And then on the gospel side, you know, take six, commission, and the winings. Winings. That right. was it. The winings blew, again, on the gospel side and the quartets, the winings blew the game up. They they changed everything for gospel music at the time. Did you ever hang out with them? Um, I know BB and CC from stuff that I had done traveling with the choirs. So right. I met them before they were the whinings. And then when the whinings hit, I was like, wait, I know, I know BB and I know CC before they were the whinings whinings. And then I hadn't seen him for a while and saw him in the airport and was like, oh my God, you, I saw your album. Blah, blah. We just fanned that out on each other and it was cool. I haven't seen them since then, but. But it was Marvin and Carvin for you though, right? From the whinings? No. Not them? No. Who was the standout for you? For them? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Marvin, yes. Marvin, yeah. Marvin and... Not Carvin. Carvin didn't really stand up. Marvin was the one. Marvin. Marvin was it for me. Just... He just commanded... When you, when you heard... When he started singing, you were just like... Oh, my God. He, is just go- he was just gospel at the time. Because before that, it was... Uh, Walter Hawkins. Right, old uh, school. James Cleveland. Old school. Benny Cummins. Killer. Andre Crouch. Yeah. And in my and, and here in New York, it was um, AGE for Christ, Jeffrey White, um, Stanley Brown, all of these young cats that are playing from church now that are out on the road now, all the cats that we were coming up together. Wow. And, oh, 
When you were churching out, was it denomination specific? Was it like, or was it was it? AM? Started off Baptist, Baptist, and then wasn't really concerned about what yeah. denomination it was, as long as it was good music and the preacher was great. Yeah, that's what I it didn't is. care. It didn't make a difference because you could have a great preacher in a Baptist church and go to a Pentecostal ch- church and be like, ew. Right. So, Mike commands attention with his voice. Yeah, he does. Um, and one of our favorite songs to do with you uh, on Monday nights here is, of course, Stevie. Um, yeah. For once in my life, uh, mm-hmm. Mike, we will have another podling where we, to be continued, as they say. <laughs> Mike Davis, yeah. ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Mike Davis. Mike Thank Davis. you. Yeah, man. Thank you. Go. Okay. Someone I needed so long Oh, once I'm afraid I can go if life leads me Somehow I know I'll be strong For once I can say My heart used to dream of Long before I knew I won't let sorrow hurt 